For my first Arduino project, I decided to make a doorbell button that would slowly change through all the colors of the rainbow. I used a push button that has an RGB LED inside of it. If you don't know, RGB means red, green, and blue. If you mix these colors at different intensities, you can see any color you like. I picked this button because it has a metal body and fits into the existing escutcheon plate for the old button. On DigiKey, this was really the only option I had. In this bench test, you can see the colors changing slowly. When I push the button, the yellow LED on the nano board flashes. That's the doorbell signal on and off. And then the button will flash, like you see here, for 15 seconds. Then it returns to the slow color cycling. For the processor, I'm using the Arduino Nano Every Board as a controller. The existing power transformer I have has an AC output that will provide about 12 volts at 2 amps. There's a 2 amp bridge rectifier and a 7812 voltage regulator that steps down the DC for the Nano Board. The 1000 microfarad capacitor was chosen arbitrarily. And here the unregulated DC is used to drive the bell solenoid. In this circuit, the regulator output drops to 9 volts when the bell solenoid is on. This isn't ideal, but 9 volts is enough for the nano board to work. A different transformer would have solved this problem, but I really didn't want to replace a fairly new one that I had. A field effect transistor is used to drive this doorbell solenoid. And I use a 3.6 ohm dropping resistor in series with the bell solenoid to reduce the current draw. The FET isn't on long enough and the voltage regulator barely gets warm, so I don't use any heat sinks. The average current drain of the board at 12 volts is about 20 milliamps. The three LEDs are driven directly from the nano board. I picked the resistor values to get a nice white output at equal drive levels and to limit the LED current to the limits of the board itself. I made a breadboard of the circuit to work out the LED brightness levels, evaluate the solenoid drive circuit and the power supply capability. Then I tested the circuit with the actual transformer and bell. Here I measured the power supply voltage and current when the bell solenoid was on. I laid out the board on Eagle CAD. I wanted to have a nice neat layout and simulate a double sided circuit board. It didn't go as well as I would have liked. There are a few jumpers on the bottom side. There was no room inside the doorbell housing to place the board so I used an electrical box in the wall behind the doorbell itself. To make the board I printed a one to one layout and cut and drilled a blank circuit board to fit. I laid the board on the side of the electrical box and marked the mounting holes from the outside. I used plastic standoffs to mount the board in the box. For the wire connections to the board, I, I used uh, screw type terminal blocks because I had a bag of them. They take up space and I, I wish I had gotten a, uh, a board to wire connector instead. Here's the wiring side of the board. Some of it went pretty well, and then I got into trouble with the insulated wire. I think I should have used a thinner gauge wire and just, you know, went around the pins instead of trying to go through everything. Unfortunately, I didn't get many pictures of the installation process. I was kind of under a time crunch and got too involved in the work and I was doing. I used the Arduino PWM outputs at 490 Hz. After a lot of experimentation, I decided to cycle each LED up to a maximum 
PWM value of 62 out of 255. I did this over 32 individual steps. That might seem low, but I didn't want to drive the LEDs too hard or exceed the output current limits of the nano board. And I like the overall brightness level for nighttime viewing. In total, it takes 96 steps to go from red through all of the colors and back to red again. I used arrays to store the PWM levels for each of the steps. I had to tweak these values to get what looked like an even change in brightness across the 32 steps of each color. By looking at the arrays, the arrays, you will see where the level of each color slowly rises and falls in relation to the other colors. At times, each LED is off. All three are never at full brightness, except for when the button is flashing white after it's pressed. I used a simple state machine to handle the slow color change and flashing white stages. The loop routine is executed every 50 milliseconds. State zero cycles the LEDs through their colors and also looks for the push button press. I think in total it takes around 30 seconds to go through all of the colors. When the button is pressed, the state changes to one. State one turns the button color to white and then turns on the, the bell solenoid for half a second. Then the LEDs are flashed white on and off for 15 seconds before returning to state zero. Any button presses are ignored in this state. So this is the final product. Uh, I'm sure this could have been done better and there are probably some flaws in it, but that's how I did it. And uh, I'm happy with it. This works. It's kind of unique. I haven't found anything like this on the internet at all. Maybe that's because nobody wants to do it, but uh, there's so many RGB projects and circuits. I wanted to have something a little different. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, it's my first video. I, I hope they improve as time goes by.